Nachos, nachos, the story behind the world's favorite snack. In 1895, a baby boy was born in northern Mexico. His name was Ignacio Anaya. And like a lot of Ignacios, he was called Nacho for short. Nacho's parents died when he was young, and he went to live with a foster mother. He loved to sit in the kitchen while she made cositas. She warned corn t tortillas, full the cheese inside, and toasted them until they were golden on the outside and melted on the inside. Nacho ate up one quesadilla after the other. Nacho learned about cooking from his foster mother. As he grew older, he became quite good at his other tasks around the kitchen, too. When Nacho turned 23, he found a job at the restaurant. He was willing to do whatever he was needed. See guests, pass out menus, take orders, and serve my meals. As Nacho went from table to table, people smiled. He had a special talent for making diners happy. In the Mexican city of Padres Nagaras, Rodolfo de los Santos heard about Nacho. Rodolfo was opening a new restaurant, the Victory Club, right across the Rio Grande River from Eagle Pass, Texas, in the United States. The Club Victoria, as the restaurant was called in Spanish, had its own orchestra, a moonlight potato for dancing, and four different menus featuring everything from steaks to seafood to Mexican specialties. Rodolfo wanted the best music, the best food, and the best people, and that included Nacho. The Victory Club's customers came from both Mexico and the United States. When they arrived, Nacho made sure everyone felt welcome. Nacho even knew how to please Madame Fennin. Mammy lived in Eco Pass, but she was known on both sides of the border for her outstanding cooking. At home, she served guests jalapeno jelly, French crepes, and oyster soup. At the Victory Club, she wanted to try new dishes. One afternoon in 1940, during the Victory Club's quiet hours between lunch and dinner, Mammy walked in with three friends. Nacho, we're tired of usual type snacks, Mammy said. Do you think you could whip us up something new, something different? Nacho smiled and headed for the kitchen. But Nacho had a problem. He didn't have any idea what to make. Even worse, there wasn't a single cook in the kitchen, and Rodolfo was nowhere to be seen. Nacho threw open the doors of the cupboards. He searched in a refrigerator. Finally, he spotted some freshly fried pieces of corn tortillas in a bowl and got an idea. Nacho carefully spread out the tortilla pieces on a platter. He sprinkled them with cheddar cheese and topped each piece of tortilla with a strip of pickled jalapeno pepper. As a last touch, he put the tortillas in the oven until they were golden and melted, just like his foster mother's cuisines. Nacho rushed the hot plate out of the kitchen and placed it on the table. Mammy picked up a tortilla and took a bite. Hot, crispy tortilla, melted cheddar cheese, a slice of jalapeno. So simple, so scrumptious, so spectacular. What do you call these snacks? asked Mammy. Not too good at well, I guess you could just call them nachos special, he said. Mammy and her friends order another platter. And another. They ate until not a single bit of the crispy new snack was left. When a woman finally left a couple of hours later, Nacho had already gone home. But on their own way out of Victory Club, the woman came across friend after friend arriving for dinner. They told everyone to order the delicious new dish, Nacho's Special. As soon as Nacho arrived at work the next day, waiters crowded around him. They wanted to know what Nacho's Special was. Customers have been asking for it since the night before. Nacho headed straight into the kitchen and started cooking. Rodolfo watched her customers eat. Nacho made people smile when they served them as a waiter, but their smiles were even bigger when they ate Nacho's cooking. Rodolfo promoted Nacho to executive chef and put him in charge of making diners happy. He also added Nacho's new dish to every Victory Club menu. 
Year after year, word of nacho's special spread. Restaurants all over Mexico and the United States began to serve the dish. Some added beans, some added guacamole, and somewhere along the way, restaurants started called the dish simply nachos. People still traveled to Padilla's Nagars. They wanted to eat nachos in the city when they were invented. Even the President of the United States and famous Mexican-American actors came to try the crunchy, crisp, cheesy, spicy snack. When the Victory Club closed in 1961, Nacho decided to open a restaurant of his own. He found a place in Patria's Nagaria, set up tables and chairs, wrote out his menu, and made sure to have plenty of tortillas, cheddar cheese, and jalapeno peppers on hand. Once everything was ready, he put up his sign in front of the door. He called his restaurant Nachos, and his most popular dish was, of course, Nachos Nachos. The end.